Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel, in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto becomes the Octree Uzumaki and got harem. Part 4. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. Traveling back to the apartment was a complete blur with for Naruto, as he let himself be dragged knowing how horny Anko was at that moment, he could practically smell the pheromones oozing out of her, she wanted him bad, and after 4 years who could blame her. Naruto knew her too well, and after he had from the age of 10 reading the Icha Icha collection that was left on his doorstep for his birthday, he was all too well versed in the art of making love. Well as far as one can be after 6 years of reading and 4 years of messing around with your girlfriend. Bursting through the door of the apartment Naruto suddenly found himself airborne as Anko had literally thrown him in the second the door was open, while she closed the door and activated the security and one-way privacy seals. When she turned back around Naruto could see the hunger in her eyes as she slowly stalked over to him swaying her hips back and forth as she slowly sloped her shoulders and her trench coat fell to the floor, leaving her in her skirt, mesh suit and wrappings. Gulping slightly he knew what was coming, he'd kept her waiting, and now she was going to do the same to him, a he could handle it for a little while, but the question he was thinking was how was she going to do it, she wasn't a member of the T&I department for nothing, and that fact alone made him a little nervous. He had seen what was left of some of the prisoners who she had been given leeway in interrogations with, and what was left over couldn't even be called corpse, that would imply it resembled a body instead of a hunk of bone and meat. As Anko got closer to Naruto she slipped off her shinobi sandals and loosened her wrappings as she got down on her knees and started to prowl over to Naruto, who was still on his backside, having been mesmerized by Shisho of her undressing. As she moved the bindings on her frieze that had been loosened, started to slip off revealing she wasn't wearing a bra underneath a mess suit as it hugged her every curve. Hoxi kun you kept me waiting, Anko said in a very seductive voice, as Naruto's eyes remained fixated on her swaying frieze and didn't notice she had started to raise his shirt as she slipped a piece of paper out from below her mess suit. And now it's time to pay the piper she said before placing the paper just above his waistline and channeled chakra into it a split second before pulling it away, revealing a black circle with the kanji for flow on it with a line through it. Feeling the sudden chakra he looked down and immediately recognized the seal and mentally cursed under his breath, it was the level 1 seal the unisex prisons used for their long-term inmates, it kept the men from fumming, so to prevent pregnancies in the prison. The level 2 version of the seal kept men from getting erect period and was used for the more disgruntled prisoners as a punishment and could only be removed by a series of hand seals that are an extremely high burst of chakra, which Naruto could do, but voted against it, seeing as he knew Anko could use a more painful method to achieve the same goal. There was a reason why she was the punishment in the T&I department for any shinobi who violated or was accessed to sexual harassment, and she was good and proud of her work. That's just mean Haim Naruto pouted with a sigh, making Anko giggle as she leant in close to his ear. So was making me wait three hours for you. Now you're going to wait for at least one before I let you she said before she licked up his neck, making him growl as she got to his ear, now, tuck me. Lemon happened. Naruto pulled out and dropped to Anko's side as they both panted getting their breath back. Anko rolled over onto Naruto's chest and hugged him as they rested and basked in the glow of their first time, well at least for 10 minutes before Anko looked to Naruto with a seductive smirk. You up for round 2 foxy coon she grinned making Naruto laugh. Oh you know it he be him, he said before in a burst of chakra enhanced speed, Anko found herself pressed hard against the far wall of the room and Naruto behind her, and faster than she could react, he was buried in her balls deep once again making her silently scream in pleasure as he leaned in close to her ear and whisper in a low growl, and this time I'm not holding back. Those words were the last she heard cause after that all that anyone who entered that apartment heard would have been the sounds of Anko's screams of pleasure and gasps of pleasurable pain as Naruto gave her the tucking he had promised over and over again. Time skipped four hours later. Anko was lying over the end of her and Naruto's better ass in the air as she gasped trying to get her breath back after Naruto had pounded her senseless, her ass was red and in a pleasurable pain after she had teased Naruto a bit too much, evident by the number of broken ping pong paddles on the ground, they had been the cheap kind and Naruto had been for the warm up for the paddle. Which was now on Naruto's lap as he sat leaned against the far wall, getting his breath back after the last round they had just finished going. Getting his breath back again he got to his feet slightly wobbly, but after a few seconds of running chakra through his muscles, he was back and ready to go again. Anko pushed up off of the bed looking back at him with a grin, up for round 15, she grinned shaking her ass at him with a smirk, telling him she hadn't had enough just yet. Naruto laughed and was about to go for her again when the doorbell rang making Anko snarl, whoever that is better have a damn good reason, otherwise I'm going to give him a snake enema for interrupting our tucking time. 
Naruto shook his head and moved to the door, but not before giving the paddle a finally hard swing across Anko's backside, making her drop to the bed once again, I'll go see who it is, you go start putting some cooling cream on that ass of yours, otherwise you won't last 5 minutes in the next round he grinned walking R as he tied on a dressing gown and pulled on some boxers and slacks. Bedding to the front door he deactivated the seals and opened the door to be greeted by the rare sight of a Haika branch member. Wearing the usual white and black robes with his forehead covered. Now Naruto was really grateful he had those seals active, the seals prevented even the Haika Mjutsu from seeing through the walls of the flat, which was one of the reasons he had installed them himself for all around privacy, those eyes were as Shikamaru would put it, troublesome. Good evening, Haika-san, and what can I do for you this fine evening, Naruto asked with a smirk, he had a small guess what this was about. Uzumaki-sama, your presence has been requested by both the clan heads of the Haika and Yamanaka clans at the Haika compound at your earliest convenience, I'm to escort you when you're ready, the man said, not breaking his stoic demeanor. Naruto looked at him for a moment, he hadn't been expecting a summons from Inoichi as well, that was unexpected, he knew Ino had feeling for him, and he returned them on some level, and with his newly elected clan status and his position in the Kra, he knew he would be getting some marriage proposals, but he never expected them this quick. Thank you Haika-san, if you'd give me a few minutes I just need to grab a quick shower and a change of attire, would you mind waiting out here? Naruto asked politely, he had never been one for inviting strangers into his home, and a Haika was definitely not on his list to do so, they could read a book without even opening it, and not all his notebooks had privacy seals on them, he would have to find a way to fix that. Of course Uzumaki-sama, the Haika said with a small bow still not showing any emotion other than a stoic one. That had always been perplexing to Naruto, he had never once seen a branch Haika member even crack a smile, and he had made it his own personal mission two years ago to get them to show some other emotion, but so far all of his attempts had been unsuccessful. Oh are you going out Foxy-kun came a voice behind Naruto, but what about round 15? Naruto turned and blinked at what he saw, Anko was dressed in a small white dress shirt which cut off above her belly button and was wearing a really short skirt that just covered her underwear and no more and had a lollipop sticking out of her mouth while holding the paddle Naruto had had moments ago. The scene made Naruto smirk, she had found his gift then. Suddenly there was a crash behind him and he looked out to see the Haika member was gone, he stepped out and looked over the railing to find the Haika branch member lying in the bushes with a look of bliss on his face and two trails of blood coming down his nose, making Naruto face palm. So itching power, whoopee cushions, paintballs, and dress in pink tutus, and even the Hokage monument covered in orange and red paint doesn't make them laugh or break their shell but Anko in a schoolgirl uniform does well, at least we have one thing in common Naruto though, before going back inside closing the door and looking at his very naughty schoolgirl Anko. He walked over and pulled her into a kiss which lasted 5 seconds before he pulled away, forgive me Anko-chan, but I've got a summons from Hiashi and Inoichi, I think it's about Ino and Hinata, this could be what we've been waiting for. Anko pouted, but it was only made sexier by her clothing, fine, I guess I can let you go for an hour, seeing as it could mean I get two harem sisters out of it, she said with a smirk before pointing the paddle at Naruto, but if you're not back in one hour and using this on me, I'll be using it on you got it, she said in a mock threatening tone, she knew she could never do it. But she would give it her damn best shot. Naruto smirked and kissed her again, love you to Hibiheim, he said before he rushed off to get showered and dressed for the meeting. Scene break. Naruto walked through the streets following the Haika member as they headed to the Haika clan compound. Naruto had decided to go with a more respectable clan attire now that he had prepared for when his clan would be made official in Konoha once again. He was wearing a deep orange-brown male kimono with a with under wrapping and a dark blue heori, with a Yuzumaki crest in white on the back and his mother's sword at his waist, wearing white foot wrappings and traditional sandals. Looking like a respectable clan figure, Hiruzen had told him of his clan's traditional colors, and they had the attire made to order years ago by Daichi, it was high quality and was reinforced with the same seals as his coat was. The Haika had been quite the whole walk and had only spoken in an apology for his composure when Naruto had come out of the apartment once more. As they walked, Naruto began to notice something, a lot of the civilians were looking at him a little bit differently, instead of hate, some were looking at him with slight respect, others with fear, though there were still those who glared at him with hate, he was curious as to just what was doing it. That was answered when they passed by two Inuzuka clan members and the partners who noticed him and bowed respectfully. Good afternoon, Yuzumaki-sama before they walked on. And that's when Naruto realized, word had been spread about the reinstatement of the Yuzumaki clan and him as clan head, well it was certainly an expected change, and a lot of the looks he had been getting now made sense. 
He was getting respect due to his status changed, the looks of fear were people worried about him deciding to take his revenge on them for their past actions against him, due to his position as clan head, or at the time of clan heir any actions against him, were an act of war against the Uzumaki clan, and now as clan head he could put forward for their immediate execution, should he so desire. But that wasn't what Naruto had planned, no he would let them stew in their fear with the knowledge that he could end them at any second and let them fear him the rest of his lives, as no doubt they would all soon be receiving summons from Ibiki to report for evaluations to see if they fall under the Hokage's decree of reparations to his clan. But if word about that had gotten out, then there would no doubt that the word of him being able to summon a cane out and that he's in contact with her. There would be hardcore kick haters out for him now, so he'd best be on his guard. He grips his mother's katana at the thought looking around just begging for someone to try something. Now the two of them were coming up on the clan compound coming up to the front entrance the gate opens and branch member steps to the side, please go inside Yuzumaki sama Hiashi sama and Yamanaka-sama are waiting for you in the main house he said, giving a small bow which Naruto returned before going into the compound. Once inside the view was quite spectacular, fresh green grass with beautiful flower beds, a pebbled path walkway up to the main house, there was even a small pond in the middle of the compound, with fresh water koi swimming in it with a small waterfall feeding into it. Bamboo trees followed one side of the path around the edge of the inner compound, and Naruto could see two sets of Haika guards on patrol walking the perimeter 200 meters apart, the compound was massive. Looking to his right he could see the main house which was a traditional style with a single floor, well behind it, he could see a number of houses, this was the main branch compound, where the head families lived, the branch members lived in a separate compound just across from this one, Naruto had known this cause, he had been there a number of times to try to get one to crack a smile. And the side branch compound was nowhere near as nice as the main branch compound. Turning and starting down the path to the main house, he went to the front door, and it was opened by another branch member, please come in Yuzumaki-sama, Hiyashi-sama and Yamanaka-sama are in the dining hall expecting you. Giving a nod Naruto slipped off his sandals and moved them to the side before stepping inside. He followed the branch member to a sliding door when he got on his knees just a bit behind away from the door, before sliding it open and bowing, forgive the intrusion Hiyashi-sama, Yamanaka-sama. But Yuzumaki-sama has arrived per your request. Please come in, Naruto-san called the recognizable voice of Hiyashi. Naruto nodded in thanks to the branch member before he walked in, and the branch member closed the door behind him. Naruto found both Hiyashi and Inoichi at the rather large dining table, both with impressed looks on their faces, seeing Naruto's new attire. Naruto-san, I must say your attire is certainly one befitting one of your status, Inoichi complimented him. Yes quite a step up from your usual attire, Yuzumaki Dono, Hiyashi said with a nod of recognition. Thank you, Inoichi-san, Haika Dono. I though this attire would be more befitting for meetings involving clan affairs, if I'm to assume this is why I was requested, Naruto said respectfully as he walked over to the table, as Hiyashi gestured to take a seat. Hearing Naruto's tone Inoichi smiled slightly, a wise observation Naruto-san, and a correct one, but I think we can dispense with the formalities and titles, seeing as we know each other slight better than that, given how many times we've spoken, and the matter at hand is more personal than business. Naruto nodded, I guess that much, and if we're being so informal, may I request that we skip any idle chat, not to be rude, but Anko-chan only gave me an hour to see what this was about, and then get back, if not I'd fear she'd send her snakes after me, and not the small kind. Both Hiyashi and Inoichi looked at him with raised eyebrows, Inoichi was the one to speak first, sorry Naruto, but we thought that four hours would have been enough time to see to Anko-san's desires. Naruto chuckled lightly, enough to appease her maybe, but nowhere near enough to satisfy her, we've been abstinent four years, and now that I'm fair game she's having as much of me as she can get. There's a lot of pent up frustration so, if we could speed this along before she gets impatient and decides to send the snakes out early that would be great. Both Hiyashi and Inoichi paled slightly at the thought, four years ago Anko had been the name that struck fear into most of the civilians, they still hated her with a passion, but most wouldn't risk going near her cause of Orochimaru, and the fact that if you pissed her off you have a river of poisonous snakes after you. And now she was the nightmare of the T&I, and, and shared the second seat with Inoichi in that department, so he knew all too well what the woman was capable of. Both men looked at each other and nodded in agreement to make this quick, as they both stood up and rounded to the front of Naruto before getting on their knees and bowing. Naruto, both Inoichi and I humbly request a unity between our clans, to be solidified by the marriages between you and our firstborn daughters, Hiyashi said respectfully. Both our daughters have expressed their desires for you to court you, and we believe this is the best option for our clans and our daughters, Inoichi continued. Naruto nodded hearing their requests, I will accept the unity between our clans, as I already planned on requesting such myself at a later date, when the construction of the Uzumaki compound begins. 
But I will not accept your request so solidify them through arranged marriages. Both Inoichi and Hiashi looked to Naruto with slight shock before anger came to them at the thought of him turning down their daughters, but Naruto raised his hand as he continued, let me explain, I would love nothing more than to have both Ino and Hinata as my girlfriends and in the future my wives, but to do so through arranged marriages at this moment in time would not work. For the main reason that neither of them knows about a cane or what really happened 16 years ago, and until they are told to put them into an arranged marriage with me before they know all the facts would not sit well with me. In fact, the whole concept of arranged marriages never sat well with me. I offer both your clans the unity unconditional of the marriages and request permission to court both Hinata and Ino as my further girlfriends and wives. I will tell them all the facts before I start that level of a relationship with them so they can decide themselves without it feeling like it was forced, if they accept me and are willing, only then will I pursue a relationship like that with them, and of course any intimacy with them will wait until they are ready for such and requested. I will not make them into baby makers to restart my clan regardless of council orders. Both Inoichi and Hiashi smiled slightly hearing Naruto's reasons, and both knew their daughters had chosen wisely in their pursuit of love, Naruto was respectful, strong, smart, caring, and would take care of both their daughters, though they still planned on being overprotective, as fathers such was their right. But something was telling them that they wouldn't have to do so as much with Naruto as they would have anyone else. Hiashi nodded, your reasoning is solid Naruto, and for this, you have our thanks. Inoichi continued, both Hinata and Ino are in the indoor garden space in the middle of the house, if you'd like to speak with them now, I'm sure they'd love to hear you out now. Naruto stood up and gave a small bow. Thank you, I believe I will, I still have some time before I need to get back to Anko-chan, now if you'll excuse me he said before turning around and heading to where he could feel Ino and Hinata's chakra coming from. As he walked out both Hiashi and Inoichi shared a look, follow him and listen in. Inoichi asked. Would we be fathers to our daughters if we didn't? Hiashi responded as he and Inoichi silently followed the blonde, wanting to hear their daughter's response to his request, both silently rooting for him. Scene break. Naruto took a slight breath steadying his nerves before releasing slowly as he stood in front of the door leading out into the inner yard of the Hike Domain household, before he reached out and opened the door and stepped out. The inner yard was a small green garden a wooden walkway around the entire rim, and a small wooden bridge crossing the river of stone pebbles that separated the walkway from the garden. In the middle of the green garden there was a blanket laid out, and on it sat both Ino and Hinata, both giggling to themselves as they talked, but when they had heard the door open, the both looked over to see Naruto dressed in his formal attire, and both blushed seeing their shared crush. Naruto smiled as he crossed the bridge over onto the inner garden seeing their blushes. Good evening you two I hope I'm not intruding, he said with a smile on the outside, while well, inside he was still fighting to keep his nerves down, hoping they'd be open to what their conversation was going to lead to. No Naruto-kun, we were just chatting, we just didn't expect to see you here, Hinata said as she tried to fight back her blush. Wow Naruto-kun, you look amazing, any reason for the fancy clothing Ino asked looking him up and down, desperately trying not to lick her lip at the side of him, as well as fighting back her blush. Well, it's only right to attend clan meetings dressed appropriately, as of four coming five hours ago the Uzumaki clan has been reinstated as a formal clan of Konoha, Naruto said with a proud smile. Congratulations Naruto-kun, Hinata said in shock happy for him. Yay that's great, Ino said in the same tone, both knowing how much his mother's clan had meant to him. Thanks, Naruto said rubbing the back of his head, you see your fathers called me here so that an alliance could be made between our clans, so as the Uzumaki clan regrows, it benefits all three of our clans, but that's not the reason I've come to talk to you now. What do you mean Naruto-kun? Hinata asked as both she and Ino looked at Naruto with slight confusion as he sat down. Well, I know how you two feel about me, I have for some time now Naruto stated as both girls blushed again at the sudden statement, the thing is I have the same feelings for both of you, maybe not as strong as I have for Anko-chan, but they're still there, and Anko-chan and I have been together 4 years now, as I'm sure you're both aware. And it's because of that I haven't been able to act on my feelings for you too, as polyamory is frowned upon for civilians. Both girls nodded sadly, they knew Naruto had been dating Anko since before the academy, and the first day at the academy, she had made it clear that anyone that tried anything would regret it, so that's why they hadn't acted either. But the thing is, now that the Uzumaki clan has been reinstated and I'm the last member, I've been placed on the crowd to restore my clan, and I'm sure you both know what that means, so I won't really go into the details. But the bottom line is Anko has agreed to share me given I must have feelings for the other girls as well as them having feeling for me, which I think is more than reasonable Naruto explained, as he could see the blushes deepening on both girls as he talked. Though Naruto didn't know it both girls in their heads were screaming thank you Kami. 
Now there is something I want to ask you both, and I'm sure you can both guess what that is, but before I ask you the question, I want to tell you some things, because I don't want you making the decision before you know all the facts just to find them out later, and then regret it and end up hating me, Naruto explained looking very serious. Both girls shared a look before looking back to Naruto and giving subtle nods to continue. Naruto nodded back before sighing, well I'm sure you both have noticed how when I walk around the village about 80 to 95 percent of the villagers don't exactly look at me with the most kindest of glares. He said getting nods from both girls, they had always seen that and wondered why, well there's a reason for that. Time skip. I'm not going to repeat it you already know it all by now. Both girls sat in silence after having listened to the one they loved telling them of his life and the nightmare it had been. All because of how the Yandai Mei Hokage had chosen him to hold the Kikbira cane after she had attacked the village, and the villagers had viewed him as the fox, even though the truth was that it had never been her fault in the first place. They had listened to how badly Naruto had been treated, and how he had only found true happiness four years ago when he had met Anko, and had been told who his parents were, though he hadn't told them who his father was given that it was ordered by the Hokage to remain a secret until he was Shknin. Now both sat looking at the blonde as his hair shadowed his eyes as he looked down, not wanting to meet their eyes for risk of judgment from them. Ino spoke first, Naruto-kun, you told us all this because you wanted to ask us a question Ino started. That question was if we wanted to share you with Anko under the craw, and you didn't want us to regret it later should we have found this out, Hinata finished. Naruto nodded, but still not meeting their eyes, yes, I didn't want to ask you without you knowing, for that exact fact, I knew you had feelings for me, but at the same time you didn't know about my status due to the Sande Emi's laws. And now that you do I can understand if neither of you wishes to be with me. Both girls looked to each other and shared small smiles before nodding, the next thing Naruto knew was that he was tackled by both Kinoichi into a hug that caught him by surprise and forced him to the ground. Naruto quickly adjusted to the new scene and looked to the girls who had just tackled him, both with smiles and loving looks in their eyes. Naruto-kun, this doesn't change how we feel about you, we could never look at you the way those Baka villagers look at you, Hinata said before hugging him as she desperately fraught back her blush at being so close to Naruto four years, and she was still trying to. Am right it doesn't, why should it a cane isn't to blame, so why should it affect how we feel about you, Ino asked as she looked to Naruto. Naruto smiled before hugging both girls, thank you, I just had to be sure, you have no idea how happy you both saying that makes me Naruto said happily that they both still wanted him. Both girls hugged back both with blushes on their cheeks, both unbelievably happy that the boy they had both had a crush on was returning their feelings for them both, after a few moments the hug broke apart and the three of them sat back all with smiles on their faces. You know I was kind of nervous about all of this, Naruto said rubbing the back of his head, both about telling the two of you about all this and the fact that you'd both turned down the idea of sharing me. Both Ino and Hinata blushed and giggled at statement understanding Naruto's thoughts, not many women would agree to share a man, but then again not many men are worth sharing, but Naruto was the exception. Ah uh, no, actually Naruto-kun, three years ago when Ino and myself talked and discovered each other's crushes on you, we well we Hinata started, but Ino cut in. We agreed that if we could both have you we'd share, Ino said with a slight smirk on her face, even at the same time. Hearing Ino say that Hinata blushed beat red and Naruto have a slowly growing lecherous smile, as a very vivid mental image of what his future could contain came to his head. At the same time, just to the inside left of the main house door, both Hiashi and Inoichi stood listing both with slight blushes themselves, hearing their daughters had spoken of such things, and both looked to each other and spoke quietly. Well, Ino certainly is very outgoing in her ways he as she said trying to put it politely. Inoichi cleared his throat, well she's always been a very outgoing girl, but I'm surprised that Hinata agreed to it, I didn't think her the type. The Ashi gave a small smile, well she takes after my wife in that way I'd suspect, but she's still young he said before they both went back to listening. Naruto cleared his throat and mind of the images, it was still too soon for some things that he was thinking of, well if it comes the time that's what you two want, then I won't say no, but it will still be some time before we do anything like that, if we do start dating, then we'll take it slow so we can get it right. Ino nodded in understanding, and Hinata shuffled nervously on her spot slightly, which Naruto noticed. Hinata is something wrong? He asked worried he'd upset her. Hinata shook her head, ah no, no nothing's wrong Naruto-kun, I agree with taking it slowly, it's just that if we're going to be dating, would it be alright if we? Hinata started but stopped nervously. If we what, Hinata-chan? Naruto asked not sure what she was getting at, he didn't think she was the type for the heavy stuff straight away, and he wanted to wait, but he was opening to listening to what she wanted. If we kissed Hinata said as she blushed red as she spoke the words, hearing the Mino blushed red too, Kinoichi or not, they were still teen girls who had never kissed before, and the thought of doing it with their crush now shared boyfriend was enough to make them both blush crimson. 
Naruto had to hold back a chuckle at how cute they both looked blushing like that, he and Anko had done much more than kiss, so the thought of kissing wasn't exactly heavy to him, but he knew that it was too soon for something major. He gave them a small smile, if that's what you would like Hinata-chan, I'll give you both one if you'd like he said as he watched both their blushes deepen, but nothing more than a small chastity kiss, I'd like to take you both out on at least one date, before we do anything more he said seriously, even he and Anko had waited till after their first date at Ichirikus before anything more serious. To the inside left of the door both Inoichi and Hiashi smiled, both knowing Naruto was a gentleman, but both keeping their fatherly instincts down, knowing Naruto wouldn't take it too far, and both shared a look with the other since they were in this together. You alright with this? Inoichi asked. Hiashi nodded, yes, I see no reason to intervene, yet it's just a small kiss, and they've both agreed to it let them have their moments. Naruto moved to face Hinata who was currently blushing up a storm being so nervous, she had asked for it, and now she was going to get it, as Naruto moved to her side, and they both leaned in and their lips gently touched, Hinata was doing everything in that moment not to pass out, Naruto was kissing her, and she was kissing Naruto, he was being so gentle as was everything she had imagined. Naruto couldn't help but smile mentally as he took in the experience, her lips were so soft he could smell her scented lipstick, peach, and he caught the scent of her shampoo, lavender and lemongrass, it was different from Anko's, but it was still nice. After a few seconds, Naruto pulled back as Hinata mewled in disappointment, wanting more before covering her mouth in embarrassment at making the noise, making Naruto chuckle slightly. Sorry Haim, that's all you're getting for now Naruto lightly teased getting her blush to deepen yet another shade and take up her entire face before he turned to Ino, who had her own blush growing in anticipation for her own kiss. Moving over to her Naruto smiled as he leant in as she did the same kissing each other gently as Ino nearly melted at his touch. Naruto took in her scent as he did noticing the difference from both Anko and Hinata, vanilla lip gloss was what he was getting this time with a mango and passion fruit shampoo, he liked it. And once more as he pulled away after the few seconds making sure not to give one more than the other, he got a disappointed moan from Ino who like Hinata, covered her mouth in embarrassment, making Naruto chuckle. Suddenly there was a cough breaking the moment as the three looked to Hiashi and Inoichi at the doorway, choosing now to break the moment, well I trust you have a good reason for what we just witnessed, Naruto-san Inoichi said in mock anger, wanting to try and bust his future son-in-law's ball slightly. We said to talk with them not seduce them, Hiashi added his two cents as well with mock anger. But before they could continue both felt their ear burning as found themselves pulled to one side like children by their separate daughters, who were giving their fathers unimpressed looks, one that Inoichi got often when he angered his wife, and one that he actually hadn't gotten in years, as both Hinata and Ino spoke a single sentence. Play nice with our boyfriend, that one phrase sent chills down both men's spines that promise untold pain to both their bodies and their coin purses, should they refuse so, both quickly nodded their heads. Naruto chuckled nervously at the scene, knowing he'd be in for trouble if he angered them, but then the thought suddenly crossed his mind as he checked his watch, and his eyes widened, crap. He yelled before sprinting past the father and daughter couples heading for the door, I've only got five minutes left before I'm late. As both Inoichi and Hiashi stood up watching the blonde blur go, they knew he knew they had made the right choice with him for their daughters, but both silently gave a prayer for his balls if he was late, and prayed for the future of his coin purse, should he take their daughters and their cravings on. Scene break. Naruto sprinted out of the Haika compound, and with a chakra leap, he jumped to the roof and took off his high speed, he had to cover a 20-minute walk in less than 5 minutes, well, if his ancestors could cover a 7-day journey in just 2 days with their village at stake, he could damn well do this with his ass on the line. As he jumped from house to house clearing whole streets heading for his apartment, he mentally cursed Hiruzen for not letting him learn the Horatian, yet it would have come in so handy right now but let out a sigh of relief when he could see his door, but his eyes bulged seeing his watch, less than a minute to go. He shot across the houses like a bat out of hell, knowing Anko's sadistic nature, and what would happen if he was late even by a second, as the very second ticked down, and with 10 seconds to spare, he burst through the door and skidded to a halt. Safe. Naruto yelled as he stopped, getting an applause from Anko who was waiting for him. By the skin of your arse Anko laughed as she got up from the seat, now let's pick up where we left off shall we? She said with a smirk but frowned when Naruto shook his head. Sorry he behind, no, I have a much better idea of how we can have fun, it's something I read four years ago that I just remember and I've been meaning to try out, but I can guarantee you'll enjoy it five times more than anything we've done so far, Naruto said with a very lecherous smile on his face, making Anko shiver in anticipation. Oh, and what's this? She asked barely able to contain her excitement. This Naruto said as he raised his hands into a familiar seal and Anko's eyes widened, Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, and as the smoke cleared five Naruto stood where there once was one, and Anko gulped at the realization of what was about to happen dawned on her, and she only uttered one word before she was lifted into the bedroom at high speed. Hami. 
Naruto lay in the middle of his and Anko's bed, as Anko lay with her head on his chest, both were naked with only the sheet draped across their midsections, their feet showing at the bottom of the cover. Anko's hair was a mess as she lay peacefully the week previous had worn her out in ways she didn't know were possible, every joint in her body was sore, but in the most pleasant ways after a week of going at it, she was content as she could have possibly been. She smelled of sex and sweat, but she didn't care the last week was beyond what she could have dreamed, and when Naruto had brought out the shadow clones, things could only have gotten better after that. Naruto ran his hand through Anko's hair as they both smiled contently, neither had left the apartment all week, Naruto had sent clones to do the shopping, get his shinobi license, arrange the week off for Anko, chat with Hinata and Ino, who both had nearly passed out when the clones told them why Naruto couldn't come to chat with them personally, but they understood that Anko had him before them. And Anko had even invited them to join seeing that her and Akane had a pact that after Anko had her week with him, she was free to have him whenever she wanted, though Naruto had put his foot down when it came to Hinata and Ino joining saying not yet. And at this point the audience is screaming that boy either has the greatest self-restraint ever or is out of his mind for turning down something like that, it's restraint and respect ladies and gentlemen, they're not one night stands. Anko rubbed her head into Naruto's chest with a moan, does this have to end? You could just seal the door and not tell anyone Anko suggested with slight hope making Naruto chuckle. Sorry Haim, no can do, I've got squad assignment today, and your week of ends today as well. So sadly our tuck week is over, though it was fun Naruto smiled with a content sigh. Anko moaned, too bad it can't be a tuck month, five of you at one time Kami that was good, next time start with that. Naruto kissed her forehead, will do Haim, now come on we need to get up I'm curious who Jiji has paired me up with, I swear if he tried to put me with that Ichiha, I'm going to shove that pipe of his up his. Dot Naruto started to say as he started to get out of bed, but stopped and blinked slowly, as a smile came to his face, that started to grow to a full on sadistic grin. Anko caught the sudden silence and looked at him curiously, Foxy-kun what is it? She asked wondering why he had suddenly gone quiet. Naruto started chuckling slightly before bursting into laughter as he flopped back on his bed, it's finally done, after two and a half years of finally tucking done. He yelled happily. Anko looked at him like he was mad, but then the time scale struck a chord in her, and her eyes widened slightly, you don't mean. Dot. Naruto grinned even more and nodded his head, yep, both projects that the 1000 clones were working on are finally due was all Naruto got to say before Anko jumped on him and kissed him furiously. Oh Naru-kun, thank you, 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 thank you. Anko squealed as she hugged and kissed him. Naruto hugged her back, and both were smiling like crazy at the news, something they had been waiting on for years was finally complete, and things could not be better right now. After a few moments both sat up both still naked as the day they were born, and Anko sporting a rather cherry behind and both with silly smiles. Okay, let's get up there's a lot to do and the sooner all this is taken care of the better Naruto said as they stood up along with Anko, both heading to get things going. Scene break. Living room half an hour later. Naruto made the cross sign and created two fully charged shadow clones, both nodding to their creator on creation waiting for orders. Alright you go and start the prep work for Anko-chan, make more clones to help you, it shouldn't take longer than two hours with twenty clones, the original said as he pointed at one of the clones who nodded. And you go and start the prep work for myself, I want everything perfect once Anko-chan is taken care of, I want it applied as soon as possible, I've waited four years for this, the second clone nodded before both shunshined away. Naruto turned to a giddy looking Anko and smiled, two hours Haim, just two hours and it will be done. Anko wrapped her arms around Naruto and hugged him, thank you Naru-kun, I never imagined this day would come, and it's all because of you. Naruto hugged her back and smiled of course my Haim, do you think I would give up, never not when it's you I made you a promise, and I'm keeping it, Naruto said with a finally gentle squeeze as they broke apart, now come on, I'm due at the academy, and you're due with Jiji for your next assignment, Naruto said before gesturing to the door. The two of them walked over all set for their days when Naruto stopped and looked to the wall mount and looked over the sheathed katana blade on it, his mother's sword, and now his, he hadn't used taken it out of the apartment in four years on the Hokage's orders, but now he finally could. Reaching up he lifted the blade down and pulled it from his sheath as he channeled chakra into it and smiled seeing the metal glow its ferocious red as it gleamed in the light. Finally taking that bad boy out for the world to see it again, Anko asked looking at her love as he held the blade. You know it, after 16 years it's time for my mother's blade to be feared once again, Naruto said as he sheathed the blade and put it into the hip slot on his belt before the pair walked out. Time skip academy. Naruto walked into the classroom as usual and took his seat not totally ignoring the looks of all the girls now giving him gaga eyes, after the emo fan club had been reduced to one after the last day in class. Said emo was currently giving the blonde a death glare from across the room as he entered, he had not had a pleasant week off. 
After the beating, Naruto had given him he had been taken to the hospital to be treated for the multiple injuries he'd sustained, which were still to fully recover. After he had been discharged he had been met by three Anbu and served the notice of the Hokage's order of recompense for crimes against the newly reinstalled Uzumaki clan, for theft of clan Jutsu, and slandering the clan's name without grounds. Informing him that the fines for such had been confiscated from the Ichiha clan accounts and that he was ordered to turn over three Jutsu as payment for the one he had stolen, as well as confirming the identities of those who had given him the knowledge of the Jutsu, Hamura Mitakado and Kahari Yudatane. Needless to say the last Ichiha had spat on the orders and blatantly refused them, only to find himself at the end of a rather pointed sword held by a cat-masked Anbu, we all know who that is, and told that he would either comply or he would be imprisoned, and all his clan resources stripped and distributed to the shinobi of the village, with the Uzumaki clan getting the first choice. He had no choice but to do as he was told. The room was a bit empty given he was a few minutes early, but he had been hoping to have a chat with Kiba, but sadly his friend was yet to arrive, though he wasn't left waiting long before he was jumped on from behind. Hey man what gives where you been all week, Kiba said as he grabbed Naruto from behind, Kasen tells me you finally get your Kasen's clan registered back in Konoha, and you just disappear, I was hoping you'd come find me so we could party. Naruto laughed as he threw Kibo off his shoulder and shook his head, sorry man I would have except me, and Anko spent the whole week in a private party of our own. Kibo started laughing, ha, now I get it no problem dude when you've got someone like Anko I can understand that, but we are going to party right. I mean you've been talking about getting your Ka-san's clan brought back in Kanoha for years, and now it's finally happened we've got to celebrate. Naruto grinned, damn right we are, as soon as the teams are set and all the formalities are done we're going out for a party. Now that's what I'm talking about Kibble laughed as they bro fisted, so you got any ideas what bitches other than Anko you're going after, I mean you're in the Krarite multiple wives and all to restore your clan, got anyone in mind? Naruto smirked, I've already got two lovely ladies for dates late in the week and I'm meeting the third later for some fun, he said as he mentally counted down the second until. Bam. Dude you work fast, leave some for the rest of us. So who's the lucky bitches and does Anko know yet, after the first day of the academy, I wouldn't think she'd be too happy. Kiba laughed. Naruto nodded, kind of hard to keep something like that from her, since she was my first she has a say in the other girls, and she had to approve of them before I did anything it was only right, and she's happier about it than you'd think about it, she actually proposed a foursome last week to get things kicked off. Kiba gawked at Naruto, are you freaking kidding me, you have got to be the luckiest bastard in Kanoha, you did do it right. But Anko, yes, but not the foursome, not for the others first times, I want each of the first to be special like Anko's and mine was Naruto explained as he leant back in his chair. The beside, you're too much of a beep sometimes. You know that. Naruto chuckled, say that again next time we spar and we'll see who's the beat then when I beat your ass into the ground for the hundredth time. Thiba chuckled nervously, yay no thanks I'm still getting over our last match, so answer already who are the lucky girls. Well I'm keeping one a secret, but the other two should be here any, Naruto-kun, second, and there they are, Naruto said as he turned to see both Hinata and Ino, coming down the steps from the back entrance to the room, both looking happily at the blonde, hey shift over Kiba, Naruto said, gesturing to make room. Fibber rolled his eyes but moved over anyway, as Naruto got out to let Ino in first, then Naruto followed by Hinata, so Naruto was between both his girls both happy, leaving Kiba just shaking his head, I should have known those two have been giving you Gaga eyes for years. Both girls blushed when Naruto laughed, yay well things are going to be much better now he said as he wrapped his arms around both girls on either side and pulled them into a hug as all three smiled, right girls, hi Naruto-kun. But the happy moment was spoiled when a screeching voice nearly burst everyone's eardrums, what the hell get away from them Naruto Baka. No one has to be told who screeched like that. The four winced only to look to see Sakura storming over looking, ready to swing for Naruto, seeing him with both Hinata and Ino like that. Naruto just scowled back, I don't see who I'm with as any of you business Haruno. Like hell they obviously don't want you anywhere near them now get lost, Sakura yelled as she threw a punch at Naruto who was about to catch it, but before he could Sakura suddenly found her fist caught by two hands one from Ino and the other from Hinata. Ino had moved faster than Naruto had thought she could, and now the two girls were glaring at the banshee, with very pissed off looks on their faces. Haruno. Piss off. Both girls yelled for Sakura suddenly felt the force of both girls' right hooks in her face as she was sent crashing into the wall on the other side of the room with two black eyes, out cold. There was a unanimous gulp from every other girl in the room a second before a cheer broke out for the silencing of the banshee. Even the brooding emo stopped brooding for a moment to fist pump the air for the small piece he'd finally get, only to win slightly still in some pain from the beating he'd gotten a week before, then going back to his brooding. 
Naruto blinked looking to Hinata and Ino who both sighed out their anger and grinned, I don't know about you Ino, but I've been wanting to do that for the PST 4 years, him speak for yourself, I knew her before the academy I've been wanting to do that for 8 years, Naruto sweat dropped at their words and mentally thought, so have I. Less than 30 seconds after both girls had returned to their positions beside Naruto and the laughing Kiba, the door opened to the room once more, and in walked Aruka and Ikgao, both just in time to see Sakura collapse from the wall. The pair blinked before looking at each other and smirking before continuing in, Ikgao, taking up her usual position on the far right side of the room next to the windows, as Aruka took to the front center of the room. Clearing his throat Aruka started, okay first off I'm not even going to ask as to why Haruno-san is in such a state, though I'm sure I have a good idea he said, getting a few snickers from around the rooms before clearing his throat again, as of today you are all Genin Shinobi of Konoha, you have all studied hard the past four years, some of you even longer than that. And now all of that is paid off, I know you will all be proud and strong Shinobi, I'm proud to have been all your sensei, he then went to his desk and picked up a noteboard with a list on it, now for your team assignments. Skipping all the non-important bits. Squad 7, Sakura Haruno, Sasuke Ichiha and Sai, your sensei will be Kakashi Hot Akiaruka called out, getting a surprisingly quiet response, well not surprising really considering the banshee was still out cold, Sai was the quiet kind, and all Sasuke did was do what emos do. Squad 8, Hinata Haikta, Kiba Inuzuka and Shino Aburami, your sensei will be Kurunai Ikiaruka recited getting a small wine from Hinata. Mo, oh, I won't be with Naruto kun or Ino chan, Hinata said in a low voice, only to get a side hug from a smiling Naruto. It's alright, Hinata chan, we'll still see each other, and even though we're not on the same teams, does it really matter now that we're together? Naruto said with a smile, trying to cheer her up, and it worked as she hugged back. Squad 9 is still in rotation, so Squad 10, Ino Yamanaka, Shikamaru Nara, and Shinjai Akimichi, your sensei will be Asuma Suratobi Aruka continued, and this time it was Ino's turn to pout. Looks like none of us are on the same team, Ino said with a frown, only to be given the same hut that Hinata had been given, and smiled having overheard his words before, no being on the same team wouldn't be a bad thing, but it would have been nice. But then something dawned on all three of them, and Ino was the first one to voice it, Iruka sensei what about Naruto-kun, he hasn't been assigned a squad, and he's the only one left. Iruka smirked, I was just getting to Naruto now Ino-san, he said before clearing his throat once more, due to the odd number of graduates this year, not all can be assigned a full squad, however, Hokage-sama saw this outcome, and decreed Naruto would be the best one for the final squad. His test scores and practicals through all four years have been perfect scores showing he is more than capable, on top of which he has also received multiple recommendations from senior shinobi, both Chiknin and Jimin Aruka spoke as a mumble started going around the classroom as to just what Aruka was talking about. Lord Hokage has decided to give Naruto a rank that hasn't been seen since the second shinobi war, the rank of elite genin, meaning when he is assigned missions with another squad, he will have the rank of a Chiknin like myself. This got a round of muttering and gasps from some of the other students, and got Naruto hugged from both sides by Hinata and Ino, with cheers of congratulations and a slap on the back from Kiba saying, even more, reasons to celebrate, but it was all ruined when one brooding emo prince with a huge ego decided to yell. What the hell is this? Why is that dope getting such a privilege and not me, and it's your elite, I should be the one with that rank, I am above him. Sasuke yelled in anger at Naruto getting picked over him again. Naruto just smirked, careful there emo, I think the bubblegum banshee is starting to rub off on you, with all that yelling getting giggles from a few of those in the room. Sasuke was about to yell back when Aruka stopped him, Sasuke that's enough, this was Lord Hokage's decision, and it's one that I agree fully with, and lest you forget it was only a week past since you were defeated by Naruto rather shamefully I might add, so you would do well to mind your place here Genin. Sasuke growled at Aruka for speaking to him that way, but was silenced when a burst of focused Kai was sent his way from the purple-haired instructor, who was giving him a very pissed-off look, making Sasuke decide against speaking out again. Now as I was saying Aruka continued, Naruto has been chosen as elite genin, and will be placed with a solo sensei, until the other members of his are ready, be it transfers from the other teams, should the arrangements not work or genin from next year's graduates to make up squad 11 Aruka, then lifted the page. Your assigned sensei is Aruka continued only to be silenced when the window just behind Ikgao smashed when something broke through it and multiple smoke bombs went off and the sound of something unfurling was heard. The smoke cleared to reveal a full-size banner filling the front of the classroom, saying in big bold letters. Property of Foxy Kun the extremely sexy and kinky, newly appointed Takibetsu JLNIN Anko Mitsurash. As the sexy snake, Charmer appeared in a purple flame shunshun with a big grin on her face. 
As she did the majority of the girls in the class shrieked and cowards behind the largest things closest to them or under their desks, each had been traumatized and scared shitless of the snake charmer since the first day after her little threat and demonstration, needless to say. None of them wanted to cross her. But those who knew here raised an eyebrow seeing the sign as the newly appointed Takibetsu Jimin part stood out. Giji promoted Yuanko chan Naruto asked called from his seat with a pleased smile, knowing how badly she had wanted that promotion for the past year. Anko grinned, yep, when I told him what was going to be happening he promoted me on the spot, before telling me he was assigning me as Team 11 sensei, I was about to politely refuse before he told me who was my only current student, looks like we might just be getting that month after all, Anko grinned even more as she licked her lips looking at the blonde. Naruto chuckled at the thought but shook his head, maybe after things are sorted, you're insatiable you know that after a straight week you think it'd at least curve your cravings. Anko gave Naruto a knowing smirk, oh really well you weren't complaining the whole week we went at it, hell you and your clones were just as bad as me. At that point every girl in the room blushed bright red at the realization of what Anko was talking about, before flying back with nose bleeds, imagining multiple Naruto's, the guys however bar Sai and Sasuke took out notebooks and scribbled down a single note of get a girl who knows shadow clone jutsu, before joining the girls with nose bleeds at the thoughts of the possibilities. Ino and Hinata both just blushed red at the thought of what some of their nights were going to be like when Naruto decided to let their relationships go to the next level, both were grateful they had learned halfway through the first year to bring back up underwear with them to class, due to their rather lewd thoughts of Naruto, they needed to change frequently after they were soaked through. Right then was one of those moments as both girls quickly ran out of the room red-faced. Anko gave a knowing smirk and rolled her eyes, those two are going to need some work if, just a thought, and they're running off all embarrassed. It gao side not everyone has morals like you Anko ni, besides I remember a few times that you did the same when you and Naruto first started, only you had to run home from training cause you never brought backups. Anko immediately blushed red at the memorized it gao ni, that's not funny. Anko whined only to be hugged from behind by a fast Naruto when she had turned. Shall we get going then, Anko sensei Naruto said with a promising tone and a whisper into her ear, making her shiver at the pleasure it promised. Huck yay. Anko yelled before Naruto consumed them into a fire shunshin that was made of crimson flames, leaving the ground scorched, just as Aruka crawled out from behind the large banner the pair had left behind. Aruka looked at the mess of broken glass, the broken window and the ruined wall with a harpoon through it, holding the rope for the banner up, and the twin scorch marks on the floor, where the pair had just left, and burst out in an I'm tears, thinking about how long it would take him to clean up the mess they had left. Why does she have to do this kind of damage just for an entrance? Haruka sighed as Ikgao came over to him with a knowing smirk. Oh relax Aruka, it's easily fixed, Ikgao said as she formed a ram hand sign and called out, Kai. Before everything vanished revealing the room back to normal and Aruka looking to Ikgao for an explanation, who smirked, it was Naruto's idea that Anko just uses Gain Jutsu for her entrances, instead of doing all of that. Kurenai helped her develop the kick-ass entrance Gain Jutsu as a result, after Naruto explained that by using Gain Jutsu, she saved money on the supplies, money that could be used to buy Dango and Raymond, that was what sealed the deal. Aruka just sweat dropped hearing that last bit before putting his hands two together and thanking Kami that at least he wouldn't have to clean up the mess now. An hour and a half later. Sealing chamber under the Hokage Tower. Underneath the Hokage Tower on its lowest level was a large open space area with large supporting beams, the ground was flat and smoothed out and had been designed when the tower had been the first built by the Sho Daimei's wife Mito Yuzumaki, for the specific purpose of advanced sealing and specialized kenjutsu, which required large kenjutsu arrays for them to work from their base level. Naruto had been allowed to use the area as his own personal work area for his kenjutsu training and personal projects, such an area was required for what was about to happen. The area had two groups of Naruto clones currently working overtime in it, one group at one area was doing a circular spider web array, stretching out from a circular area, with one smaller slot in the middle of the area, for the target of the array. The second group were working in a straight line as they had a 50 meter long by meter wide scroll laid out on the far side to just where the first array ends, each was inking and checking kenjutsu arrays like there was no tomorrow, as they were almost finished as the first group poofed out of existence which was followed by the crimson flame shunshin revealing a very disheveled Naruto and Anko, both whose clothes were messed up, same with Anko's hair, Naruto headband was crooked and his shirt wrinkled, but both with pleased looks on their faces, after they had stopped at home for a quickly on Anko's request, in order to get to know her student better, in order to help team dynamics. Which was all code for a congratulations and thank you Tuck. Straightening up his headband Naruto smiled looking over the finished array, and looked to see the other clones were just about done. 
perfect everything's on schedule Naruto smirked as Anko hugged him, she had been looking forward to this day for years, almost as much as Naruto's graduation, but to have both happen so close together she was over the moon. Naruto hugged her back, are you ready my Himi, I know how long you've been wanting this. Anko nodded, I'm ready, just a little nervous, are you sure it will work? Naruto raised an eyebrow at the questing and smirked, have I ever been wrong when it comes to my Fkinjutsu? Anko shook her head, have I ever done something without entirely thinking it through when it comes to you? Anko shook her head, have I ever put you in harm's way, excluding the bedroom when we both know you love that? Anko giggled and hugged him harder, no you haven't, sorry I'm just nervous about it all, I guess it all just hasn't settled in yet, I'm actually going to be free from it, from the mark she said, as her hand went to her shoulder, where the curse mark Orochimaru gave her was. Naruto nodded, I understand, and it won't be long until your nightmare ends. Now come on let's get started. Take your coat and shirt off, and I'll start applying the final arrays to your body to interact with the main array he said as he went to a table to start mixing the inks. Anko smirked, oh my foxy coon you didn't have to do all this just to get me to take my shirt off she said as she draped her arms over his shoulders and pushed her assets into his back, we both know you can have me whenever and wherever you want she purred into his ear, still riding the high from there quickly before coming there. Naruto smirked, oh I know it he said without turning, and I'd take you right now if it wouldn't have messed up the array on the ground, but right now I need to focus here, this ink has to be just right in order to do what I need it to do, so please he behe me as much as we both wanted. Curb your lust for the next few minutes until I can get this done he asked gently, but with an underlying tone of seriousness. Hearing the tone Anko nodded and started to remove what Naruto had told her weary of the array on the ground. Naruto was always serious when it came to Fkinjutsu it was the backbone of his entire shinobi arsenal, true he was extremely strong, and he could match both their sensei in Kinjutsu and keep them at bay, and his Uzumaki Jutsus were so powerful he was a one-man army. But the one thing he was passionate about, the one thing other than her, Raymond and Dango that brought a spark to his eyes, was Fkinjutsu. She knew he wanted to make both his parents proud of him, and he had chosen Fkinjutsu as the way to do it, he had mastered the first six volumes already, and the only reason as to why he had yet to master the advanced set was due to the Hokage cutting him off in his third year at the academy, saying it had been how his father had learned. He had learned the first six volumes and stopped until he had mastered them to the extreme, so that he would be able to master the others easier, it had been the technique used by the Uzumaki clan before their fall, it was how they became masters at such a young age, because there was so much to learn, that much was clear. Naruto had put her to sleep one night when she had asked him about why he had read the book on making chakra ink 20 times over, she had regretted it when he started explaining the hundreds of variations of chakra inks and their various methods of production and what they were used for. It was a mixture of the ingredients used to make the inks and the concentration of chakra inside the inks that made them work the way they did, it had been one of the things that made the Uzumaki clan so rich their inks were made from the highest quality ingredients and densest chakra it sold for extreme prices for just a small jar of it, but it was no wonder people wanted it. Seeing as the same ink was used to cover the walls of Konoha to keep them strong in an attack, the ink was under the paint and according to Naruto would last another 50 years before I needed a touch up. Looking over his shoulder as she took her shirt off she got a glance at the table, and the amount of herbs and ingredients on it was enough to make her head spin, she was familiar with poisons and venoms as any good torture was, and as a shinobi, she also knew what herbs made good medicine, in order to treat wounds when out in the wild. But she didn't recognize anything on that table even when she looked closer, there had to be over 90 jars in a semicircle each with ingredients in them. And Naruto was running his hand over each of them and picking different herbs as he lifted them and put them into a mortar bowl and started to grind each of them down into powder over and over again before he added it to the black binding agent along with his blood as he poured it into the final container and placed it in the center of the array on the table. The array on the table looked like a large spiral design with a center circle where the jar of ink was placed and at the end of the spiral were two larger circles where Naruto placed his hand, the array started to glow a bright blue and the ink started to spark as Anko felt him starting to channel his chakra into the array for the final step. After another moment or so it was done as the ink smoked after the chakra infusion. And Dun Naruto said as he lifted the ink, this is the highest quality I can make at my current level, and with my current stock of herbs, it should be more than enough to deal with whatever that curse mark can dish out, Naruto said, confident, as he turned to Anko, who was now topless with her cleavage on full display. Not that it really shocked Naruto he'd seen her naked so many times over the years it was just a pleasant sight for him now. Just how much did you spend to get all those herbs, I don't recognize any of them they must be extremely rare and expensive, Anko said, wondering just how much money Naruto had just blown to make that ink for her. 
they are, I had to have Jiji get them imported from several monasteries and other hidden villages all across the elemental nations, and tap into the Uzumaki funds to pay for them, separately they're worth about half of Konoha I'd say, and this jar at this quality would fetch just under half of that with the density of chakra I just put into it, Naruto explained like it was no big deal. Anko looked at him like a deer in headlights, he was spending millions on her to remove this curse mark, and she knew he'd do it all over again and again, because she meant that much to him, and she'd do the same for him, because he meant the same to her. After the shock had worn off on just how much he was spending, she followed him over to the middle of the array, where he had her sit down cross-legged as he moved to her curse mark and started applying the genjutsu. Anko chan I need you to stay as still as you can for me, I can't afford to make any mistakes in these arrays, or it could jeopardize your health, Naruto warned before the brush touched her skin. Anko nodded hearing the serious tone of his voice, he didn't joke when it came to her welbing her about kenjutsu, so staying as still as she could Naruto started to apply the seals to remove the curse mark and the last hated reminder of Orochimaru from her life forever. It was another half an hour before the brush left her skin for the last time, much like the fkinjutsu on the floor beneath her the markings on her body were made up of intricate markings with barely any space between them, from afar it would just look like they were lines made up of small blobs, but looking closer, you could easily see each mark was made up of hundreds of other symbols. This was a testament to just how good Naruto had become with Kenjutsu over the years he'd be studying, there were six lines of these all directed to the curse mark on Anko's shoulder, with a ring of them around the curse seal, each line was placed, so it lined up with the array drawn on the floor, and he had done it all with incredible accuracy and speed. Putting the ink jar to the side along with the brush Naruto took a deep breath as he stood behind Anko. Alright we're all set, this is going to hurt like a bitch for the first few minutes, and then hurt like a son of a bitch for the rest of it, so brace yourself Anko-chan cause once I start I can't stop. Anko nodded, she had no fantasies about it not hurting. When the mark was placed on her the hours after had been the most painful of her life, so, of course, removing it would be just as painful if not more so, alright Naruto-kun, let's get this show on the road already. But the nod Naruto took another breath before exhaling quickly as his hands burst into movement as he weaved through over a hundred hand signs in under several seconds, before placing his right hand over the seal and braced it with his left arm, Uzumaki sealing. Forbidden art. Seal evisceration Naruto called out as the array of genjutsu glowed a dangerous red all around the pair. Naruto started and she had braced waiting for the pain, but after three seconds nothing had happened she had thought for a second perhaps they'd been mistaken, but then she found out otherwise, it hit her on the seven seconds, pain everywhere it felt as though someone was stabbing her all over with white hot pokers. Her eyes bulged and she screamed out in pain, which was only enhanced by the room's acoustics as it echoed. Luckily the room was made soundproof by a number of seals, otherwise, they would have had people coming to find out what the screaming was all about. Hearing her in pain was breaking his heart, but Naruto knew he had to keep going no matter what, the risk to her if he stopped was too great he risked frying out her whole chakra network if he did. He had tried for so long to try to find a painless way to remove the mark, but there was none. It was designed to only be removed on death, so as to hide its powers forever, so technically all Anko would have to do would be to die until the mark was removed and then be brought back, but that was too risky for Naruto, there would have been so many things that could have gone wrong. This way was much safer, though it was extremely painful. The mark was set to monitor the flow of a person's chakra, when it got too low, it would inject an even volatile cocktail of chakra into the host, making them powerful. But it was clear that that function on this mark was incomplete and couldn't put chakra into the host and instead looped it back on itself causing Anko pain, but its sensor was still working fine. That would be how it knew to remove itself by monitoring the flow of chakra, when the flow stopped it was a sign the person was dead, the mark then began its removal process, but Naruto was doing something that the creator of the sensor couldn't have predicted, instead of the flow of Anko's chakra, slowing down to a halt it sped up, that's what was causing Anko so much pain. Her chakra being forced through her coils at over 20 times the normal rate. To the sensor it monitored the chakra like a heartbeat's pulse and would remove itself when the chakra flatlined, but with Anko's chakra pulsing at such high speed, it was giving the sensor a false positive, in short, the chakra was pulsing so fast it appeared to the sensor to have stopped, thus starting the removal process that was where the second part of Naruto's kenjutsu came into place. Naruto didn't want the mark to remove itself, oh no, he wanted to destroy it completely, curse marks like these were often made by placing a small portion of the user's soul into it in order to control the ones they're used on, but that would also mean when the mark was removed. It and the soul portion would return to Orochimaru, who would have known the mark was removed, and if he had spies in the village would know that Anko was still alive without the mark and would have looked into how it was removed and fixed the flaw Naruto was extorting to remove it. 
he couldn't allow that to happen, if he did he wouldn't be able to remove any future marks like this that he might come across, so there was only one option, he had to destroy that part of Orochimaru's soul in the curse mark. As one of the lines of Kenjutsu started glowing orange Naruto knew that the seal had started to break down and that the soul was venerable, pulling back his left arm he started to cycle through a second series of single hand signs before putting his hand left hand beside his right and closed his eyes, Yuzumaki forbidden art. Soul devastation Naruto called out as his chakra flowed out of his hand and turned a dark purple as Anko screamed in pain even more as the second process began. This jutsu had been one that his clones had found when they had realized that this was the only method of removing the seal, and they realized the outcome should Orochimaru realize his seal was venerable. It was a jutsu his clan had made for dealing with Yuen jutsu, some Yuzumakis had strayed down that path, but had been expunged from the clan, and this jutsu made to remove their twisted creations, but it had been ladled a forbidden art due to the extreme pain it caused the victim that had the curse mark, but it was the only method Naruto could find that worked. There was no other way to stop a soul fragment from returning to its master, and pulling it out and sealing it away would have only delayed the inevitable of its escape, and either way the soul fragment would fight back and cause Anko pain. The process continued for another two hours, as slowly each line of Kenjutsu on Anko's body turned orange, and as the final one turned they all flashed a bright blinding blue, before disappearing completely as Anko and Naruto collapsed on the ground, their energies completely spent as one by one, the second group of Naruto's clones went poof, sending their chakra back to the original which helped him. To his feet. Looking to Anko's neck he smiled it was slightly red from the heat of the removal process, but it was done the curse mark was completely destroyed. Anko lay on the ground panting not even having the energy to cover her chest as she strained her voice to speak, I is it gone? She asked as she struggled to keep her eyes open. Naruto nodded, it's gone Anko-chan you're finally free from him, you're all your own now, he said with a small smile on his lips, one that was matched by Anko as she slowly fell asleep as exhaustion took her. Smiling Naruto picked her up and took her to one of the pillars and lay her down to sleep as he covered her in her coat, should anyone come in while he finished his business here. Looking over to the scroll his clones had finished inscribing with Kenjutsu Naruto smirked, he'd been waiting a long time for this, learning how to intertwine hundreds of seals so that they work in perfect harmony for this moment to pull them all together into the one purpose of creating his masterpiece. Walking over to the end of the scroll where the lines of Kenjutsu connected in a circle as a focal point. Next to it was a smaller scroll, opening it he channeled chakra into the small storage seal, and in a poof the contents appeared, it was a meter and a half in length made of pure chakra metal, it was a simple staff its surface smooth and unblemished, but it wasn't just any chakra metal. It was Yuzumaki chakra metal. Flashback two years ago. Naruto walked into Shinobi arms with a set goal in mind, as the bell above the door rang, a girl with brown hair and a twin bun hairstyle, stuck her head around the corner, and blinked seeing Naruto come in. Good afternoon and welcome to Shinobi Arms, if there's anything you need be sure to let me know, and I'll see if I can help you the girl greeted him. She was wearing a loose-fitting pale white shirt with long sleeves, black, loose-fitting trousers and a messy grey apron over her front, showing she worked in the back forging weapons as well, though she looked to be only a year older than Naruto. Actually, I came to place a custom order as Daichi around, Naruto asked as he approached the counter. The girl blinked as the familiar term the boy used when addressing the owner of the store, him he's in back, may I ask how you know my Tusan, I've never seen you here before. Naruto smiled, oh sorry, Daichi used to be the only one my Ka-san allowed to work on her sword beside herself and my Tusan, after it was broken I brought it here for repairs, I stop by every now and then to pick up some gear or drop off some storage scrolls for the shop supply. Oh so you're the new supplier of our storage scrolls and explosive tags then, Tusan mentioned you were young, but I didn't think you were younger than me, sorry my name's Tenten Tenten introduced herself. No problem my name's Naruto Yuzumaki second year academy student, currently level 4 Kenjutsu practitioner Naruto introduced himself. And one of our most valued customers and suppliers, Daichi said as he came out of the back whipping his brow, it's been a while Naruto you haven't been by in a few weeks I take it you've been busy. Hello Daichi, yay sorry I started a new project and it's been keeping me really busy, Naruto explained as he took a scroll out of his pocket and put it on the deck, here's this month's supply of scrolls and tags as ordered, ink still fresh. Taking the scroll Daichi nodded, thanks for that Naruto, your work is always top quality and better price than the other suppliers in the village, if you will wait here a moment I'll get your pay, Daichi said as he turned to head into the back. Actually Daichi, I was hoping you could put this payment to a special order I need to be done Naruto explained, getting a raised eyebrow in response. The special order? Tenten asked curiously. 
Naruto nodded as he took out a sheet of paper from his coat and unfolded it on the counter, showing the dimensions of the staff he needed to be made. I need it made of pure refined chakra metal. With these precise measurements in both length and diameter with this detailing, they must be precise to the millimeter. Both father and daughter looked over the sheet, and Daichi hummed reading over the measurements, it's doable Naruto, I take it this is part of that project that's kept you away for so long. Naruto nodded, I'm still working on the second part of it, but this will be the canvas for it all to come together on. However, there's one thing I need to be done with the metal Daichi, I need you to use those seals you told me about, I need the metal to be Uzumaki chakra metal for this, I don't want anyone, but me, to be able to use this. Because once it's done it will be dangerous in the wrong hands. Uzumaki chakra metal. Tenten asked not sure what he was referring to, but saw her father nodding. I understand. Tenten, do you remember that sword I repaired two years ago? The one that had been broken in two with a red cloth grip and whirlpool guard Daichi explained to his daughter. Tenten nodded, yay I'd never seen metal like that before, it's like it had its own chakra still inside it. Daichi nodded, yes that was Uzumaki chakra metal, and it was Naruto's Ka-san's blade that I was repairing. Tenten's eyes widened as she looked to Naruto with stars in her eyes, that was the blade you were talking about, it was beautiful, please bring it by and let me see it again, it was incredible. Naruto sweat dropped at the sudden request, um sure thing, I'll bring it by on my next visit, Naruto assured her before looking to Daichi, so can it be done. Daichi nodded, aye it can be done lad, give me a few weeks it's going to take that long just to get the metal refined and ready, before I start the steeping process in the chakra, the whole process could take up to a year, depending on how extreme you want the end results to be. As extreme as possible, the outcome needs to be perfect, no one, but I can wield it after I've finished my part, Naruto said seriously getting Daichi's nod of approval. Alright then, better make it a year and a half, then you will have it halfway through your last year at the academy, is that alright with you? Naruto nodded, yea it will probably take longer than that for me to get what I've got planned for it ready, so take as much time as you see fit. Flashback end. Naruto lifted the bow staff up and felt its chakra melding with his own, as he let it flow, as the metal started to glow the deep red like his mother katana had, feeling the connection he set the staff into the center of the fkenjutsu circle, and smiled as he remembered when he first had this idea years ago, when he was trying to increase his chakra control. But it was proving impossible with his reserves, and that's when this idea had come to him, and now the idea was finally ready to be made reality. Placing his hands onto the outer rim of the circle, Naruto closed his eyes as he began channeling chakra into the ring, slowly the lines of genjutsu started to move into the circle, and started to wrap around the body of the staff, as they seemed to write themselves onto it. As slowly the circle of genjutsu started to wrap themselves around Naruto's hands after several moments the genjutsu stopped flowing as the last of the markings settled on the staff, and Naruto's eyes opened before he called out. Kin as all the marking glowed a bright white light before fading, revealing the Fkenjutsu marking now etched into the metal. And the Fkenjutsu on Naruto's hands faded entirely, but yet the metal of the staff was still smooth, like there was a thin coating of something over it protecting the marking. Lifting the staff up Naruto examined the markings, and his grin grew more and more as he did so, the markings were wrapped so tightly they fit into the separate segments that made up the staff that Naruto had requested Daichi make. The Fkenjutsu had warped parts of the staff, just as Naruto had predicted where the segments were, the top part of the staff was slightly wider than the middle part and was more prominent to one side, while well, there was clearly a difference between the thickness of the middle segment and the bottom segment was very easy to see as it was thicker than the top part, but evenly in all directions. Holding it in his hands Naruto smiles before he started spinning it effortlessly swapping it around behind his back and into his other hand, and then back in front before holding it out in front of him with a smirk, weight and gravity seals are working just fine. It feels as light as a feather, even though it's made out of the densest metal there, is as Naruto thinks as he spins it with his eyes closed, as the top and bottom halves begin to change into sharp spear ends, and he held it out. Warping seals are responding well to chakra shape manipulation Naruto confirms before he looks to the side and hurls it like a spear into the far wall, before holding out his hand and it pulls it from the wall and spins toward Naruto, who uses the momentum to spin it around his body as it reverts to its original shape as it slows to a halt and the return to chakra source seal is working well. Nice now all I need is a field test to try you out. So that's it him? Asked a weary Anko as she walked over to Naruto with her coat covering her modesty. Naruto turned and smirked, yep, two and a half years of planning, research and a couple of hundred seals later, and this is what you get. Anko smirked slightly seeing him excited about his new toy, he'd explained it to her back whenever he'd first come up with the concept for the weapon, she thought he was nuts, to be honest, but after he started to go into the fkenjutsu of it all that's where he'd lost her. 
but to see it now and have seen its shape-changing powers firsthand she had to admit it was very impressive, and if it could do everything Naruto had told her he wanted it to do, then he could be holding one of the deadliest and most versatile weapons in the elemental nations. Well I think I've got the perfect way for you to test that bad boy out, Anko said as she had a slight grin on her face. Naruto looked at her with a smirk at her grin, oh, and what way's that? Naruto asked curiously as he looked to his lover sensei. Anko crossed her arms under her chest serving to only push her free sup more making Naruto smirk, well according to the graduation rules, all graduates from the academy have to be vetted by their assigned sensei, and while we both know you're well past plain gen and rank evident by your elite status. Mainly due to the fuss that would be raised if the old man made you a jimnin right out of the academy. I feel it's only right that I follow the rules and test you like the other sensei are testing their genin, and I have the perfect test in mind," Anko said with a very mischievous grin, that Naruto knew all too well, that only served to make Naruto's smirk grow. When she got an idea in her head that gave her that grin, Naruto knew someone was going to get maimed or pranked, and he was sorry for whoever it was she had in her crosshairs. Time skip. Both Naruto and Anko stood in the ceiling room, both with grins on their faces, after Anko had just finished explaining what exactly Naruto's test was going to be, and he had to admit, it was going to be fun and a challenge, he couldn't wait to try out his new toy in this test. The only downside was that the test couldn't be done until tomorrow, as that was the only time Anko knew where the target would be. Naruto smirked, Anko-chan, you are both incredibly sexy and incredibly mischievous, sometimes you know that. Anko raised an eyebrow as she smirked and walked closer to him swaying her hip, oh, and here I thought I was incredibly sexy all the time she said before shrugging her shoulders, letting her coat drop, leaving her chest bare to him as she stood in front of him, or am I losing my touch foxy coon, she said with a knowing smirk, as she leant in pressing her chest against his. Naruto smirked, oh no you're sexy all the time, it's just when you get mischievous like that it just really adds to it, he said as he wrapped his arms around Anko's bare back, and they shared a kiss for a moment before breaking apart, and Naruto smirked, oh whatever will we do until tomorrow, Naruto said in fake confusion. Anko smirked, oh I have a few ideas, she said before they both disappeared in their red and purple fire shunshin. Time skip next day training ground 7. The day had gone on as any other day had for one Kakashi hot Aki, he had gotten up at 7, as usual, gotten ready for his day, spent an hour at the memorial stone, contemplating just where it had all gone wrong. Losing his teammates had been the two of the lowest moments in his life, right down there with his father taking his own life out of shame for failing a mission. And then there was the fact that he had also lost his sensei the night of the Kikbi attack, in which he had done absolutely nothing. He had tried to find ways to make amends for his mistakes in some way, but that was only after he'd been assigned to Anbu on request for many years to try and bury himself in dangerous mission after mission, to try to get away from the pain of his failures, but it hadn't worked. Then two and a half years ago he'd been removed from Anbu by the Hokage, who had done so in his wisdom to try to help the man get over his grief by making him take on genin teams as a Jinin sensei However, Kakashi's standards were never met. He always gave the team assigned to him the same test each year time round, the bell test, the same one his sensei gave his team, in order to pass they had to work together to get the two bells and see through the illusion. But each year it was the same result none of them could do it, so he did what he always did fail them, and send them back to the academy for remedial lessons, and a two-month chknin sensei before being put on reserve. In Kakashi's eyes, or I, teamwork was key if a team couldn't work together, they had no hope of becoming his genin team, however, that wasn't going to be the case this year, and he knew it. He had arrived at the academy yesterday irritated and annoyed by the number of people who were blatantly telling him to pass his team, there were even some threats slipped under his door at night that he'd found in the morning, he was obviously in no mood for putting up with their rubbish, of course, when he'd opened a letter slipped under his door, that was a large explosive note, that was made to be a dud, that had been when Kakashi had started taking things seriously, especially when he'd found the same envelopes placed at several places throughout the village at places he frequented. Now with civilians involved Kakashi had no choice but to pass the team, had he reported it to the Hokage, whoever it was would have just slipped away, or could have already set active explosive tags at other locations in the village, and there had been no way to trace whoever had put the fake ones in place, so he'd just have to do as they'd said. Which had led to the current setting, Kakashi standing in his Jimin attire, in front of three posts, two of which were occupied by a tied up Achiha, and his pet fan girl who Kakashi was convinced, had weaponized her vocal cords, or it was some kind of Keke Genkai for using her voice to fight. Sai was currently leaning untied to the third post with an uninterested look, Kakashi couldn't help but sigh, he was actually hoping this team would somehow be passable, and he wouldn't have to pass them due to the threats. 
he had been wanting to train the Ichiha boy as a way of repentance for failing his dead teammate by training the last member of his clan, well that had been before he met the breeding emo in person, he was obnoxious and uncaring towards his teammates, cared only for himself, and declared openly he could take Kakashi on himself, that he didn't need a team when he was in Ichiha Elite. Kakashi had instantly taken a disliking to the boy and the girl the second she opened her mouth to agree with every word he said, and at the same time nearly deafen him with her squealing, neither of them was fit to be shinobi by his standards. The only one who showed potential was the third member, Sai, he was something of a mystery to Kakashi, he had the skills of a genin, but the way he moved and the boy's chakra levels told Kakashi something very different, the jutsu he used were also something rather unique that Kakashi had never seen before, and he would make it a point to ask for more information on the boy. Looking down on the two tied to the wooden posts he mentally scowled, there had been absolutely so signs of teamwork between the two and Sakura had been useless, falling for a weak level gain jutsu in under a minute into the test, and yet a report state that her gain jutsu testing was high, Kakashi had no idea how that could be. He'd seen the reports on all other possible Kanoichi in the graduating group, and both other full teams, had Clan Eris both who scored higher in all areas than Sakura, except for the written portion where Sakura had gotten full marks. So I've got a brooding emo avenger with shit poor people skills and a superiority complex, a screaming fangirl with an Ichiha and dieting obsession, and an enigma who's hiding his true skills, how the hell am I meant to work with this Kakashi mentally sighed to himself as he tried to think of a way to make this team work. He'd have to pass them, but he'd make sure they had some teamwork skill before he took them out of the village, and he sure as hell wait a long time before teaching the Ichiha any offensive jutsu, especially after his little stunt in the test. Just as Kakashi was trying to contemplate how to get this team to even show some teamwork so he could justify passing them, he felt two chakra signatures closing in fast on their location and turned around as both Naruto and Anko appeared via Shunshin. Blinking his one eye at the sudden arrival Kakashi smiled under his mask, grateful for the distraction. Hello, Anko, and what brings you here? I'm in the middle of wrapping up my genin test with these three he said, gesturing to the three by the posts. Anko smirked, and it looks like you're doing a hell of a job with them Kakashi she said as she saw the banshee and emo tied to the wooden posts, I just came by to ask a favor to see if you wanted to give me a hand with testing my student here with a quick spar. I've already fraught him, but I just wanted a second opinion on his skills, and you came to mind. Then Naruto told me that team 7 had the emo and banshee there, I figured you could use a lifeline Anko smirked. Kakashi sweat dropped, you have no idea, he said before looking at Naruto with a curious gaze, he had heard of the blonde's achievements both in and out of the academy with his pranks when he was younger, pranking Anbu was not an easy task even more so in what he used to wear. He had wanted the blonde on his team after he'd seen his academy papers, the blonde had matched his score on the kunai and shuriken test scored full on the written and got the highest in the ninjutsu test since the beginning of the academy, he was a virtual powerhouse on top of the fact that Kakashi had wanted to be the one to teach his sensei's son. Yes Kakashi knew about Naruto's father, he had been another one who had been invited to their wedding, so of course when Kashina's son turned up and was blonde, Kakashi could put it all together, it was why a third of his missions as Anbu after that day when in the village was watching over him to keep him safe, and there had never been an incident when he was on guard. Giving his patented eye smile Kakashi nodded, sure I don't see why not, I wouldn't mind seeing what the rookie of the year has up his sleeves. Naruto and Anko both grinned, Kakashi had no idea of what Naruto's real objective was in this fight. Behind them Sasuke was fuming listening to the scene, hey what are you doing you one-eyed bastard, you're still testing us. Sasuke yelled in anger as Sakura frowned over being so close to her precious Achiha before joining him and screaming. Yay, would you want to help the Baka when you have Sasuke Kun and me here? We're far better than those two. Sakura backed up Sasuke. Sai just shook his head sighing at his teammate's stupidity as he recalled his new orders depending on the situation change, should his team pass. He was to guard and watch the Achiha and assess his mental status and determine if he was a threat to the village, if they failed he was to report back to Danzo and have arrangements made to try to be placed on Anko and Naruto's team and survey the blonde and do the same as with the Achiha determined threat level to the village. But through the test he was quietly debating adding a secondary objective of putting a kunai through Sakura's voice box to half the threat of villagers and Shinobi begin deafened by her screams. Kakashi just turned slightly and gave a one eye glare at the pair, you two will shut up neither of you got the meaning behind my test, and so by rights I should fail both of you, now shut up, or I'll make sure you're both dropped from the shinobi plan entirely. You can't do that. Sasuke yelled in anger, I'm an Ichihan elite, I order you two he was about to continue before Sai planted his left foot across the emo's face, knocking him out cold. What the hell you freak with you Sakura started only to revive the same kick from Sai to achieve the same result. Anko, Naruto and Kakashi just blinked and looked at Sai wondering why he'd done that. 
I owed the Ichiha one for nearly roasting me in the test, and I just couldn't take any more of the banshee's stupidity or screams, Sai explained in a completely monotone voice, getting sweat drops of agreement from the other three. Okay, Naruto said before looking to Kakashi, shall we get this started? He asked really wanting to give his new toy a test run, and Kakashi would be the best option for that as one of the strongest yunin in the village. Naruto had been wondering how he'd stack up, and now he was about to find out. Sure Kakashi said with an eye smile before both tensed up and threw themselves back and skidded to a halt, giving each other room to move as both Naruto and Kakashi dropped into ready stances as they got ready to attack. Kakashi knew Naruto had at least one Uzumaki Jutsu under his belt due to Naruto's little demonstration in the ninjutsu portion of the genin test, so he knew he'd have to take things seriously in this fight as his hand went to lift his headband up to use his Sharingan right off the bat. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he saw Kakashi go for his Sharingan, he knew of it due to his research on the copy ninja or Sharingan no Kakashi as he was called by most, his single Sharingan eye, allowing him to copy hundreds of Jutsu over his many years as a shinobi. It would prove the perfect test against his new weapon as he reached the storage seal on his hand to pull it out and fight. The air was tense as things were about to get underway when a voice cut through the air. Wait. Chapter End. Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.